How many times have you caught yourself over the past year saying, my goodness, I miss going to the movies? I think if you're like most folks, the answer is a lot. Cinemas all over Ontario have been shuttered during this pandemic at great cost to the employees, theater owners, and of course, patrons who love seeing movies the way they're meant to be seen on the big screen. Ellis Jacob is the president and CEO of Cineplex, which operates 165 cinemas with more than 1,600 screens across Canada, and he joins us now from Midtown in the provincial capital with more. Mr. Jacobs, good to meet you. How are you doing? Great to meet you too. Well, thank you. You are in the business of showing movies, and of course, tell us what this past year has been like for you when you can't show any movies. It has really been tough because uh, everybody I speak with really misses that movie going experience. And, uh, you know, it's great you can watch movies at home, but it doesn't compare to that experience socially and with all of the extras that you get when you visit a theater. And I can't wait to get back. You've got more than 13,000 employees across the country, everyone from top executives to people who put the popcorn in the boxes. How many of those 13,000 have you had to lay off, do you think? We've laid off a number of the uh, frontline staff because of what we're going through, but uh, our full-time uh, staff, we have basically uh, kept uh, as much as possible. Uh, we took salary reductions in 2020, including uh, all of the executives uh, right the way through. And the government with the Q's program has helped us uh, retain a number of the employees uh, in our locations across the country. So we Q's thank them for the, that. Right. Employee the wage subsidy. Wage subsidy, yeah. yeah. Right. Now, yours is a company that normally does, I think, about a billion and a half dollars in business every year. How much revenue were you able to realize this past year? In uh, in 2020, we took a, a huge nosedive. Of course, the first quarter was was strong, and then it declined uh, dramatically uh, for the rest of the year. And uh, we ended up, I think, in the uh, 300 to 400 million dollar range. I don't have the number right in front of me. <laughs> That's a big dip. Yes, it was a significant dip for the quarter and for the year. Now, if the movie theaters are closed, how are you making any money at all? Well, we have a number of assets that still do generate uh, money. The, uh, you know, we've got the Cineplex Digital Media, where we basically uh, market and put uh, screens in banks and, uh, you know, uh, stores and all across uh, Canada and some U.S. locations. And uh, that's uh, continued to do not great business, but it's done well for us as we've gone through the pandemic. Then we've got the Cineplex store where you can actually uh, uh, watch a movie through, uh, you know, purchasing the movie or renting the movie. And we even deliver food with Uber Eats and Skip the Dishes. So you can replicate the cinema experience in your home. And we've tried to communicate with our guests uh, through the scene loyalty program as we move forward. I know that there have been many people in the cultural industries who have had meetings with either the minister, Lisa McLeod, or with the premier, Doug Ford himself. And I'm wondering whether you have had over the past year direct talks, either in person or on Zoom, with the premier of Ontario to try to convince him to allow your theaters to remain open under, obviously, um, extra special circumstances. Yes, I have spoken with the Premier on a number of occasions and also spoken to Minister McLeod and uh, worked very hard to, uh, and uh, Minister McLeod actually came to a movie with, uh, with our uh, team and she really had a great experience and uh, said we were the gold standard of uh, safety uh, protocols within the theaters. And the challenge is really uh, with the medical groups and how they treat us. Now, as I've said publicly, we have never had a case of COVID in our theaters. And globally, there has not been a case of COVID uh, which has started from a movie theater. So we basically feel we are doing all we can to keep our employees and our guests very safe as we move forward. If that's the case, why won't they let you open? That's a good question, and we keep uh, bringing that up as to, you know, that we have a safe environment 
but everybody's concerned about indoor social gatherings. But with uh, the proper physical distancing, I think uh, everybody is looking in the same direction. There's not a lot of discussion and communication. So it's a very high ceilinged environment and it's in, in a good uh, position. Well, I hate to be a cliche here, but because I suspect uh, hundreds of people, if not thousands, have shared their movie going experiences with you over the past year. But the last time I was in one of your theaters was last September. I went to an IMAX theater uh, up at uh, number seven, uh, Highway 7, just north of Toronto, a 300 seat theater. There were four people. I was one of four people in that cinema. We had our masks on. Obviously, we were sitting physically distanced uh, with that few small number of people there. And except for the fact that the theater was empty, it was a great experience. It was wonderful to be able to see a movie, I think it was Tenet, uh, on the big screen. Um, again, uh, when, when, when I came into the theater, they checked my temperature. There were plexiglass behind which popcorn could be sold. It seemed pretty safe to me. So again, what's the problem that the government of Ontario seems to think um, exists here that it won't let you open up? We keep having those discussions and it's individuals like yourself that, uh, you know, help us if we communicate back to uh, the government and the authorities and the medical uh, groups to see what we are doing and how safe it is to have that uh, great experience within a cinema environment. And uh, the province of Quebec, as you are aware, when the March break for the students were on, they actually allowed us to open and the uh, uh, kids came to the theaters and had a great experience while, uh, you know, they were on the break. And that has continued, uh, you know, and in Quebec, we've got all but a couple of theaters open and they are all opening by next week. Has the province given you any indication I mean, perhaps right in the middle of this third wave, they don't want to do it, but how soon after the third wave is over, you might be able to reopen? We are hoping that comes quickly with the vaccines rolling out much faster and hope the numbers continue to drop. And uh, we are looking forward to uh, reopening, you know, once uh, we get past May 20th and, uh, you know, we're able to open. Yes, we understand we will have... Uh, you know, uh, seating capacity limitations, but we need to move that and ramp that up pretty quickly. Now, some of your buildings are older. Are there any concerns uh, among provincial officials that you haven't got, let's say, adequate ventilation in your cinemas? We keep working on that, and we've actually uh, now working on doubling the airflow through our theaters, so uh, external air will be circulated faster through the theaters than they were in the past to complete that whole cycle because it would be no, you know, with the high ceilings, it would be much easier as that ventilation process is uh, continuing to be uh, moved forward. I wonder if you ever made the argument to the province, Mr. Jacob, that, um, look, Toronto and Peel are in some difficulty. We know the numbers there are very high, but there are huge swaths of this province uh, where there are very, you know, very small case numbers, if any at all. Have you made the argument that can we open up in some places, maybe not Toronto or Peel, but elsewhere? Yes, we've had that discussion and debate, but then they categorize each of the areas in different color zones. And uh, Ontario has some of the toughest regulations. So, for example, uh, you know, if you're in an orange zone, you can only have 50 people in a building. So you can imagine when you went to the Colossus in Vaughan and you said there were four people the chances are because of the restrictions, the number of individuals in a building are restricted. And at 50 people, it doesn't make sense in a building that size. Whereas other provinces allow us to have, you know, in some cases, 100 or 200 people with physical distancing uh, in the auditoriums. Okay, that's interesting. So let's understand that. How many, how many tickets per theater would you have to be allowed to sell to get to the point where it actually makes uh, financial uh, sense for you to open up? Look, as a starting point, I'd love to be able to at least have a minimum of 50 people in each auditorium and then going up uh, as we move forward, you know, uh, to 100 to 200 uh, like we have in Quebec. And I understand that we need to uh, physically distance and we are comfortable, you know, starting on that direction. But to say you can only have 50 people in a building that has 3,000 seats uh, is impossible to get a financial return. 
Right. Now, you made an announcement um, just uh, the other day where uh, your first quarter loss was 90 million bucks. Uh, how, how many more quarters of sustained losses, uh, you know, can you, it's a big company, so I'm sure it can handle it, but, but at what point does it get uncomfortable? Well, we've been very focused on uh, having a strong uh, financial position and we are here for the long term. And we've also, in this past quarter, we did a sale lease back of our head office building for $57 million. We raised a quarter billion dollars in high yield notes to basically solidify us and, uh, you know, take us through the pandemic and give us a good, uh, you know, 12 months of uh, breathing room uh, if everything were to stay as bad as it is and, uh, you know, looking forward. But we are pretty excited to get back into business. Our employees are ready to go. And I think our guests are even more uh, looking forward to the experience in the cinema. So the plan is, as soon as you guys get the green light, bring those 13,000 people back and go, go, go? That's it. We want to go as quickly as we can. And we are ready to go once uh, we get the green light to move forward by the uh, different provincial authorities. And God forbid, but if there's a fourth wave, uh, have you got contingency plans for that? Well, as I said, we are very, uh, you know, financially strong for another uh, good year to get us through. And uh, we continue to look at, uh, you know, our financial position, the costs that we have within our uh, business uh, facilities and uh, all of the requirements as we move forward. I should ask the other obvious question, which I'm sure people want me to ask, and that is when the theaters do get opened again, are you going to have to raise the prices of tickets and all the confections in order to kind of make up for the losses of the past year? We are going to be looking at all of, uh, you know, the alternatives we have, but uh, it's bringing our guests safely back. That's the most important for us. Okay, that that was not a no. So, so it's on the table. No. No, but it's not going to be a situation where you're going to see, uh, you know, massive price increases uh, for our guests. That's not uh, something that we are looking to do. We want them to come back, have a great experience, and that to me is uh, the most important. And through the pandemic, we've been very reasonable with uh, pricing and what we have done for everything that we offer our guests. Okay, this is not a business program, uh, as you know, uh, but um, I mean, th the business of how you do what you do is is of interest to our viewers and listeners. So uh, I'm going to ask you, um, I'm going to ask you about the takeover that was in the process of taking place until this pandemic hit. Um, I am curious about the $2.8 billion takeover uh, by the UK company Cineworld, which they subsequently called off. And now I know it's in the midst of legal action. Where does that sit as we speak right now? We are continuing with the uh, legal action and uh, we have our hearing set for September of, uh, of this year. And, uh, you know, we've done depositions, they've done depositions and we are going through the uh, regular legal process. And it's made a little more difficult because of the pandemic, but uh, so far we are focused on the September date. You have a gift for understatement. It's, it's probably been a, more than a little difficult as a result of the pandemic. That is correct. <laughs> that is correct. Okay. Yeah. Is it your hope at the end of the day that in fact the sale will go through, they will purchase Cineplex and uh, shareholders can realize whatever benefits come from that? Our focus is to basically make sure that uh, our shareholders get uh, the fair treatment that they deserve under the circumstances and uh, we move forward and that uh, Cineworld uh, makes sure that they can uh, repay us for the lost uh, funds that we suffered as a result of uh, them reneging on the transaction. Okay, let's move on. I wanna play a clip now uh, from a filmmaker that we had on this program a couple of months ago. Her name's April Mullen. And um, she had this to say about the state of movie theaters and streaming services, because of course, as you pointed out at the top, uh, that's where all the movie watching is happening these days. Uh, let's play that clip and then we'll come back and chat. If you would, please, Tony. I do believe that now that audience have had over a year of getting content when they want it on the platforms they want it, uh, 
we have to move with them. And even though, you know, films are created for the big screen and I am a huge lover of the big screen and there's something incredible to watch, you know, the feeling of watching in a community, that's what we make films for. But uh, you also do as the filmmakers and producers have to give your content to the, you know, the consumers and where they want it at the time they want it because now it's just kind of very immediate. And I don't think there's any going backwards because they've had a year of this kind of spoiled slash they can watch whatever they want whenever they want in their living room. How much do you worry about audiences having established new habits over the past year and they may not come back to the cinemas in the numbers they once did? We've been in this business for over a hundred years. And, you know, we've been faced with many uh, situations, you know, with uh, originally with television, then with, uh, you know, the VCRs, DVDs, uh, you know, uh, now we have streaming. And the bottom line is it's not the same experience as being able to have that social gathering and seeing a movie on a big screen with a big sound. And, uh, you know, you look at a movie like Tenant, can you imagine watching it even on a 50 inch uh, TV screen or compared to going to the movie theater? It's not the same. And I remember, you know, many, many years ago, I'd ask my kids, what are you doing this evening? Now they're a lot older, but they would say nothing. Their definition of nothing was staying home and watching a movie. <laughs> and and uh, to, uh, to them, if they were going out to the movie, they would say, we are going out for a uh, you know, uh, an experience and and a fun time at the theater. No, there's no question. Going to a movie is an event. Staying home is an entirely different situation. But, you know, and I appreciate the hundred year history you have, but people really have established new habits. And there are even more and newer um, streaming services coming online in the, in the near future. Uh, I mean, I presume you worry about that as confident as you are about your ability to come back. Well, we worry, but what we are seeing, and we've seen that with all of the big studios, is they still value that uh, theatrical window uh, for the movie release. And as I've said repeatedly, we are the engine that drives the train. The knowledge about a film is driven by that uh, theater experience. And to me, that's uh, really important. And that's why some of the streamers are very keen to have their movies play in movie theaters. Did you watch the Academy that. Awards this year? Yes, I watched them and, uh, you know, it was difficult. Uh, a, a bit of a different experience even for you in as much as none of the movies played in your cinemas? Well, a lot of it had to do with the fact that we were closed, but, uh, you know, uh, it's a situation where we feel that the theatrical experience is very important and that will come back as part of the overall process. How important in the uh, reopening and getting people to go back into the cinemas, how important in your view will the, uh, the so-called, you know, the action, big blockbuster superhero movies, how important is that going to be? They are very important to our guests uh, coming back. And I think those movies are very hard to experience in a, in a small screen at home. And, you know, we see that all the time. And uh, even when you look at movies like, uh, you know, Demon Slayer that opened in Japan and became the largest grossing movie ever. And this is post pandemic and comparing it to pre pandemic movies. That movie, even in North America, has done extremely well. Our guests are hungry. They want that experience. And, you know, you look at what's going on in the marketplace, and uh, it's all about uh, getting and having the ability to have that experience. And the, you know, comparative thing I say is you have food in your refrigerator. Do you stop going out to eat? <laughs> I, know you, you, I know you said about cooking up your meals, but, uh, you know, we want to be social. We want to get out and be together. Is there still the opportunity for kind of the smaller Canadian film that you know is not going to be a blockbuster, but, but has something to say? Will there still be a place for that film in Cineplex's future? I'm a very strong proponent of Canadian films. I, uh, you know, love them. And I think, uh, you know, the more we have from a Canadian film perspective would be great. But again, we have to make sure those films are marketed 
uh, properly and also have a storyline that our guests want to come out and watch. For sure. Uh, Mr. Jacob, just finally, if you had to put 20 bucks down and make a bet and say, I bet you my theaters will be open by such and such a date, what is that date? If you're looking at the whole circuit from coast to coast, I think you're looking towards the end of June. If you're looking at specific marketplaces, I would say it would be, uh, you know, end of May, early June. Because today we have, uh, you know, we'll have 30 theaters open across the country, and it all depends on the provincial positioning as we move forward. And how about here in the province of Ontario? When are we going to see them all open again? If the shots keep coming in the way we are hearing from a vaccine perspective, I think, uh, you know, once we get past that May 20th date, I think uh, there will be reopenings and then they will accelerate as we get into June. And I'm quite uh, optimistic and I'm encouraged by, uh, you know, what I see around the world and uh, looking forward to it for us here in Ontario and Canada. So keep the jabs coming. That is the most important. I even offered our uh, theaters for the jabs. <laughs> I, I, Did they say yes or what? Uh, no, we uh, had discussions and uh, they basically didn't uh, take us up on it. We did in some provinces use the theaters for uh, COVID testing, but not the actual vaccines themselves. But in smaller markets, we thought it would be a great idea that the uh, guests would be familiar with the local theaters and they would be able to come out and get their vaccine. And we could basically, you know, do something for them while they did that. And I think that would have been exciting. Well, put me on the list of those who can't wait to get back into a real movie theater to see a real movie. And we're grateful you spared some time for us on TVO tonight. Thanks so much. Thank you for your time and looking forward to seeing you at a movie soon. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.